Thank you for your patience. Meeting call to order. Thank you for joining us, and I appreciate your patience as we get started. Mrs. Freed, will you please take roll? Madam President, I find that all five board members are present. Thank you. Next, if you'd please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Dr. Wall will be leading us. Before we get started with consent, I want to wish a warm welcome to Dr. Wall, who is joining us for a first official meeting, hopefully the first of many, many, many meetings. <laughs> Thank you very much. And with that, we'll jump to consent. May I get a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Consent adopted. Next, we move into action. And for that, we turn to Dr. Mr. McMichael. Thank you. I got you caught up here. Um, at the last meeting, I gave a rather extensive report regarding the proposed budgets and, and uh, capital projects fund plan, the bus replacement plan for 2014. Uh, so this evening, I'm asking permission to advertise the public hearing uh, relative to those budgets and plans, um, which is the next step really in the, in the budgeting process. Well, thank you very much. May I get a motion? Madam President, I move uh, granting permission to advertise uh, as requested. Thank you. Second. Second. Discussion. Mrs. Gass? Yes. Um, Roger, I had a couple of questions, please. You did. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you do. I always do. Um, on the CPF budget, um, it talks about $26,000 for rental of buildings, facilities, and equipment. Is, is that actually a rental of a building? Um, does that have anything to do with the um, after school? I mean, not the after school, but the additional um, classes for the high school? No, it does not. We did have, we were paying rent for the, uh, um, I would say alternative, the uh, Karma Learning Center. Yeah. Um, but we have since moved that program in the uh, building that we acquired from the trustee, what the so-called old library building. And so, so we're, that was the only building that we had uh, consistent rent on. Uh, so, from time to time, we will rent space for the at the height for for high school programs. Um, I don't know if we're still doing this, but there was a time where we would um, uh, rent for like round trippers for some athletic events and so forth but we no longer have a consistent rental payment um, now that we're since we moved out of that space okay that's what I was wondering because I, I know we we're going to make ac have access to the space across the street for those kinds of programs yes and so, so um, I didn't know if that was something that is just not part of the budget anymore it is not okay um, then um, under the general fund mm -hmm. I have a question about the um, PL221 lines yes. that appear in the uh, 11, 12, and 13 hundreds. It, it appears for sal sub salaries, contracted services, travel, and supplies. And it's different in each, each one. Yeah, Amy may be able to speak more specifically to that, but that has to do which you and I know what the uh, assessment and evaluation. Is. Yes. Right. Um, and the money that's in those budgeted lines the, for PL221 money has to be budgeted. Um, we have not received actually professional development PL221 money from the state in a number of years, but there are some still there still are some buildings that have um, balances in those accounts, and so they David puts it in the budget in order for us to be able to spend those. Um, okay, but we're not, we're not doing any traveling or anything like that that's um, related to that at this time, right? Well, yeah, travel might be going to a um, local conference or, um, you know, paying for the um, mileage to going to a conference downtown or something like that, but that would all go come into the travel 
piece, but not traveling to conferences out of state or things like that. That all related to um, evaluation? The PL221 one? Yeah. Money? It wouldn't necessarily be evaluation, it would be on professional development. It could be possibly on evaluation. Okay. Um, and I was looking under uh, 12, 7, 10. Yes. And it lists expenses like subs, et cetera, professional development, but it doesn't list any teachers. So I was wondering what that was. Again, um, we've got $1,200 for professional services and $1,140 for travel noted as ESL. Uh, so I would believe what this, the, 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 t the staffing that would be using these funds are coded in various other areas in the budget. Okay, would these be teachers maybe that are in the referendum fund? Because some of, some of our staff is also listed in referendum fund. So would these be maybe in two different places? They could be. Okay. Um, it's simply we're, we're, these are the relatively small amounts that are uh, used to support their efforts uh, relative to this at-risk program for special okay. needs. Um, and just one more question then. Under the office of the superintendent, mm -hmm. since we have a new superintendent now, um, it says non-certified salary. I'm assuming that is Dana? It is, but it it is currently. Um, <laughs> But, but in previous years, there was a time where we were coding the, um, the staff for the, for the Education Foundation because oh. we, we, we were doing, they had one employee and now they have two, but they did have one and so they weren't exactly set up, of course, to do payroll. So years ago, we, the district agreed to, to do that person's payroll and of course the foundation fully refunded every, all the expense. and. That has changed since 2011 or 12, and so now we're no longer doing that payroll, and so now so now it just reflects now Dana. it just reflects Dana before okay. it reflected both, but one was just in and out. Well, I couldn't figure out that, where yeah. the discrepancy. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions, discussion items? Okay, then it looks like we're ready to take a vote. All in favor? of granting permission to the administration to advertise for the public hearing for the 2014 budgets, the three-year capital project fund, and the 12-year bus replacement plan. Signify by saying aye. 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 Greg? I didn't, I'm sorry. Did, did you, you say you? aye? I didn't. I'm sorry. Did you, did you say yes did or? Did you vote? Yep. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't hear you or see you, so okay. Thank you. Motion. <laughs> Motion adopted, thank you. Okay. And moving along to discussion, I know we've got quite a bit, so I thank you very much, Dr. Dillon, for bringing forward some fun, fun activities. Fun activities, yes, that's how I refer to them, fun activities. Madam President, thank you, members of the board, and Dr. Wall, good evening. Uh, my pleasure tonight to bring to you uh, some bylaws and policies for a first reading. Of course, this is part of our continuing quest to review all of our policies and bylaws and update them. Uh, some of them have not been touched since the early 90s. And so we're taking this opportunity to, uh, what was it, a seven year journey to uh, review these. So thank you very much for this opportunity. And I'd also like to thank everybody for scheduling this special board meeting tonight just for me to do these policies. I appreciate that. Even though Roger took a few minutes of my time, so. All right, uh, this first group, I will apologize ahead of time and I will do my best to weave us through this journey of deleting, adding, and changing. Uh, let, me, let me start. Uh, Mr. Phillips is shaking his head in dismay down at the corner at me. So let me start by saying to you that um, Neola presented to us what they believed was a better way to package these bylaws. And after the policy committee reviewed those, we agreed with that. And so what you're going to see as we go through this journey together tonight is some of these will be deleted and will vanish if you approve them on the second reading the next time I'm here. And they'll be combined into new retitled bylaws. And so we'll do our best not to make it too confusing and don't hesitate to ask questions. And I'll do my best to have the answers that you're asking questions for. So some of these are grouped together. So start off with bylaw 0151 organizational meeting 
and bylaw 0154 motions. These are revised bylaws proposed to us by NEOLA, reviewed and revised by the policy committee. Here's the executive summary. The policy committee is proposing that bylaw 0154, which is called motions, be deleted and combined with bylaw 0151, organizational meeting. Bylaw 0154 motions actually addressed appointments that were made at the board's annual organizational meeting. Therefore, it made sense to take this step. A list of annual appointments has also been updated to reflect your current practices. So you will see, I'm um, going we'll to go a little backwards here, 0154 motions we are recommending to delete. It's gone. and then 0151 organizational meeting, we have moved the other bylaw to this, combined the two, and added some additional items that bring this bylaw up to reflect current practice. And members of the policy committee, please jump in at any time to help clarify this journey. Doing great. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Please go ahead. Just a couple questions. And first, contrary to what you said, Dr. Dillon, I want to commend the policy committee for their reorganization and looking at this in a holistic way. So, Thank you very much. It was an odd path. Sorry about that, but I, I think it looks great. I, I did have a couple questions on, actually a couple of them, but I'll start here. Um, on B, on this, authorize uh, the organizational meeting um, includes authorize the president of the board to appoint individual board members to any necessary committees or as representatives to various organizations. Uh, in the past, what has historically been done is really some discussion on that. It's not just an appointment by the president, although I'd say more discussion and um, asking in more recent years than when I first came on the board. Uh, how this one relates to a bylaw that we'll get to 0171.1 later on, responsibilities of the president. This one, it looks like, has to do with, oh, committees that are known up front, but sometimes things come up during the year. Is that, are those situations handled in this? Mm -hmm. Or is that hundred, handled under the president responsibilities? Is committees Just the organization meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I, I Very good example, yes. That's how you got appointed to the Parks Board. Yeah. So I just wanted to, I guess my thoughts were two. One is, historically, it's, it's not just the president appointing, but there is some thought, you know, input from the board. But then when we get to responsibilities of the president, when those things do come up in the middle of the year, that might be something we need to add to the responsibilities of the president, because those do come up in the middle of the year sometimes. They don't just come up at the organizational meeting. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are just my thoughts on that. Thanks. Um, to just looking at, at this, I, I think it's, it, it seems clear to me that um, the item that Trish is talking about, uh, appointing a board member as like, well, let's see, what was it? Um, I lost it. D. D, appointing a board member as legislative. Oh, no. Okay, very good. B. It, it seems like the, the, the scope of, the, of this is just the organizational meeting mm -hmm. and the other bylaw 0171 point that, that seems to deal more broadly with, with the president's powers to appoint. But I, I do have a question that, that relates to, to what I think Trish has asked. And do, does B allow for us to, to vote for these appointments, or is it something that the president does on on his or her own cognizance? No, these are ones we vote on. These are ones that we need to vote on. Like we voted to support Kathy as the representative to the Parks Board. Yes. So, yes, these are the ones that we've included at the organizational meeting are ones that we need to vote on as a board. Yes, all, all it says here is that 
the, the president is appointing and then we would like like we do at this point you know I, I would suggest to support yeah to and a second Kathy vote. would be on the parks board and then we would vote on that it's an action item okay so there would be a vote yes, yes these are okay. action. these are actionable items that are included on B for the authorization okay. mm -hmm. Does it? thank you does yes. it need to say somewhere that these are action items and this is the list of action items for the meeting because although I know we have a slate of office I mean we had pretty much predetermined by discussion with the different offices and also the appointees you still have to present it and we have to vote so I when I read appoint I take that as you have the full authority to just say this is who it is and maybe I'm not reading it correctly Nominate. Well, I might interject at this point yeah. if I could that this is actually um, original language that part has not been changed mm -hmm. so doesn't mean that this discussion shouldn't continue but it was not a change from any past action yeah, I, th I think uh, madam president if I could speak uh, I think where the clarification is that like Dr. Dillon said, it's not a change in language, and we have a a precedence of process that we're all comfortable with, um, and that maybe it's not at this change, but that maybe that's something we look at and to make sure it's actually in policy. We have a system that works that's not super de duper clear here. Um, that's a that's a legal term, <laughs> um, but I think that's what we're all saying the same thing is that. The president authorized makes the motion we approve or don't approve at the meeting I do have a secret person in the audience taking notes for you tonight so I will have this <laughs> reflecting and uh, our policy committee does meet again this Friday morning yeah, we do meet so. this Friday and we will look we will pull that up I do know specifically in the law it does cite what we are required to do at the organizational meeting which is appoint our legal counsel um, and that's why we included mm -hmm. our deputy treasurer our treasurer and then we went through the other items that we know that we do appoint at our meetings which is our executive secretary um, we will look further at that to be sure that what we are including in language um, reflects our practice other discussion items that you'd like us to take a look at on Friday on this one okay next okay that was just a teaser for you because now here comes the real challenge okay the category of bylaws 0160 meetings uh, there's a lot of changing deleting renaming and so please bear with me again these were these are new and or revised bylaws these were proposed by Neola they re have been reviewed and revised by the policy committee executive summary is as follows these bylaws have been changed to address the 2012 and 2013 amendments to the open door law new bylaw 0164.4 is from the 2013 legislation amending the open door law most of the action in the 2013 open door law legislation deals with definition sections these changes are reflected in the new bylaw 0165 bylaws changes reflect the 2012 open door legislative changes these bylaws separate board member open door law notice for regular special and emergency meetings and you'll see those titles reflected here as we go into these bylaws the content of bylaw 0165.6 has been included in the revisions to bylaw 0165.2 the content of these bylaws address the very specific steps that must be followed to hold a valid board meeting in these circumstances business conducted at an improperly convened meeting is to be avoidable so let's look at the next page and we'll go through each one of these one at a time bylaw 0164.4 this is a new bylaw for us meeting of the board defined hmm. I will not read this verbatim for you 
which I have to say this was very helpful as board since we did use this yes. this past week. I have a question on, on this one. On A, a social or chance gathering not intended to avoid the principles of the Indiana open door law set forth in, in Indiana code, et cetera. Um, could the policy committee or Dr. Dillon or somebody on the policy committee could clarify this as far as um, earlier it says up at the very beginning, a meeting means a gathering of the majority of the board members for the purpose of taking official action. Um, did the policy committee talk about a meeting of a majority of the board members without the purpose of taking official action but discussing business? Where does that fall in the new? Well, that, that, that's, an, that's an action. Do you not believe you're allowed to discuss business with the majority of the with board. the majority of the board okay. uh, unless you've made the official notification and followed those guidelines? I believe an example of this would be um, each spring we have uh, retirements, and you guys uh, are invited to those retirement parties, and you show up. We do not have to notice the public that you're all going to be in the same location at the same time. You're not going to conduct business. You're there for a social function. In the past, when we've had redistricting meetings, and we've invited you to attend some of those sessions, we were always so cautious before to make sure that, mm -hmm. that three of you didn't show up at one time. Believe that after reading this, you could show up to that meeting because you're not conducting business. You're watching a committee do its work. You're watching a, a presentation that I might make to the public. And so you're not actually conducting business. Now you obviously would have to avoid having discussions while you're there and talking about school business. Um, but I don't believe that any longer we would have to post notice on those kinds of things. Okay, thanks. That's what I wanted to make sure that the law had, that I mis didn't misunderstand, the law didn't change on the discussion of business. Um, so I'm fine. Okay. I get it. Thanks. You're welcome. Great. Thank you. Could you please talk a little bit about uh, item D, a caucus? What, what does that mean? I could if I knew your answer, Mr. Phillips. Um, uh, we've, we have taken uh, the NEOLA recommendation as defined by law. We'd have to do a little research for you to get your answer. I'm afraid I don't have an answer for you tonight. When you find an answer, please let it know. We will. Thank you. I'll put that on our agenda for the policy committee this week. <laughs> Get the very top. Mr. Phillips, H, a caucus is a gathering of members of a political party or coalition which is held for purpose of planning political strategy and holding discussions designed to prepare the members for taking official action. So it does not include official action. That. Would that pertain? Would that pertain perhaps to uh, when we attend ISBA conferences to receive information from ISBA as to board policies and state laws, would that be considered a caucus? Mm -mm. It's, it's political strategy. A caucus is related to political strategy and holding discussions designed to prepare the members for taking official action. Right. And in that instance, it wouldn't just be us attending, we'd be attending with other people. So it wouldn't be just a caucus of these members. Okay. Other questions? Okay, next. Thank you. Okay, back to our list. Bylaw 0165, Notice of Board Meetings. This is a new bylaw proposed by Neola. Discussion? Yes, Mr. Phillips. 
I, I should know this, but at our organizational meeting, we um, we declare our regular meetings for the year. Do those include our workshops? Yes. Any of the meetings that you're going to hold for the year would have to be declared at that time. Thank you. You're welcome. Other discussion? Okay, next. Next on our list is bylaw 0165.1. This is a revised bylaw. And as you'll notice, whoops, sorry. This is a recommendation to delete. This language is included in a different bylaw 0165 notice of board meetings. Next on our list, bylaw 0165.2, notice of special board meetings. This is a revised bylaw, starting with a title change, and it's a bylaw that specifically deals with special board meetings. The current content moved to 0165, notice of board meetings. So this is where part of the shuffling goes. The, the item at the top that's been lined out has been moved to a different bylaw that we've already discussed. And now this is a retitled by law from change of regular meetings to notice of special board meetings. And the content clearly just deals with special board meetings. Please. Um, my question has to do with the very last sentence of the second paragraph. Special meetings must be held at the regular meeting place of the board. How does this pertain to retreats or um, meetings that we might hold in our district, but not necessarily at this regular meeting site. That's a very good question that I don't have an answer for tonight. We will research that and get an answer <laughs> for you. Thanks. You're welcome. A similar question, perhaps, Dr. Dillon. Um, I, I know that the, the board at one time had at least talked about, and this is before my time, but the board had talked about the uh, possibility of having workshops at different locations around the district. Uh, do you feel that uh, the, the law would prohibit our, our doing that? I do not believe that the law would prohibit you from having workshop meetings, let's say, at the different schools. As a matter of fact, historically in the past, when I was principal at Clay Middle School, we did that. Uh, each month, you would have a workshop meeting at one of the schools and would focus on what that school was doing with curricular programming and extracurricular program. That, I don't believe, is a special meeting under this policy. Um, I believe, if, as we read through this, if you'll notice, this would be a very special meeting outside your regular schedule of meetings that you would call for a special purpose. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I was going to add, I think it, it could, an example of that would be if we were having a board meeting and during the board meeting there was something that we needed clarification on, we'd call a special meeting and that special meeting would have to be held here and the notice would have to be going out within 72 hours. So that would be something that we would call in an immediate fashion and need a special meeting on. So it's not like a planned workshop. Okay. Or, or retreat or, I'm just thinking of things that we've, um, those, 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 those are not, those, those fall under different categories. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Thanks. You are. And with regards to that, this, this typical special meeting, we have to give special notice to, about the special, we have to give you physical handwritten yes. notices. This is far different than, right, it's different than um, any other type of traditional meeting or retreat that we would schedule. Okay, so let's go back to August 28th. We had a, we had a meeting at 6.45 a.m. Would that be considered one of our special meetings or would that be a regular meeting or an ex that wasn't an executive session because we took action? So does that fall under the special meeting category? No. Because it wasn't advertised. No, because meeting. that's advertised. Yeah. Yes. I know, but it wasn't on our agenda at the beginning of the year. We added it to the list, so we, right. we made a special meeting for that purpose. 
Yes, but this wasn't something that was called and we had to send out notices, written notices in 72 hours. So the, the written notices is so that everybody has noticed that the meeting is taking place because you only have a certain amount of time in order to, to enact that. So that meeting we knew was coming because that was at the end of the appointment of the superintendent. So that's not the same thing as a special meeting all of a sudden being called because we need to organize and get something done. Okay? I think possibly an example, if I might offer one, is that if we have a regular school board meeting and during that meeting um, something comes to our attention uh, that might possibly be a controversial item that we have to deal with in a very short amount of time, and so you would call a special meeting, you would follow these procedures and notice that. I think the intent of this would be that we don't hide, we don't have that meeting at a different location to possibly confuse the media or confuse the public about where we are and why, why we're meeting. So as to, to add no confusion to the situation, back to what Tricia had asked, we're going to hold it in our regular meeting area. Thank you. Other questions about special meetings that we may or may not have an answer to? <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. Remember, this is why we have a first reading, so we can ask these questions. Next on our list, bylaw 0165.3, notice of emergency meetings. This is a revised bylaw starting with a title change and revised bylaw that deals specifically with emergency meetings. Current content of bylaw 0165.3 was moved to bylaw 0165.2. You'll notice the language at the top that has been lined out. That's been moved to the previous bylaw that we just discussed. Discussion. Great. Next. And last on this list of confusion, bylaw 0165.4, notice requirements established by other statutes. This is revised, beginning again with a title change and revised and the revised bylaw dealing with notice requirements established by other statutes that have not already been covered in the previous bylaws we've talked about. The current content of this bylaw was moved to other bylaws that we've already discussed. Discussion? Next. Who knew it would be so difficult to have meetings? Yes. Okay, moving on. Bylaw 0171.1, President, Bylaw 0171.2, Vice President, and Bylaw 0171.3, Secretary. These are revised bylaws proposed by the Policy Committee. They have been reviewed, reviewed and revised by the Policy Committee. These are brought to you tonight as part of the ongoing uh, review of bylaws and policies and to clean up the bylaws and policies of Carmel Clay Schools. Uh, they have revised, excuse me, they have, the policy committee has reviewed the three bylaws previously mentioned and offer proposed changes that reflect our current practice. Starting with 0171.1, the president. Discussion? Um, I guess, I guess two questions. One is uh, from what I asked previously when we were talking about the organizational meetings. Um, if there's need for mid-year, somewhere during the year, to come up with a certain, to appoint for a certain committee or to appoint something, um, does, for the policy committee or the board to consider if that needs to be delineated in the president's responsibilities? Is my first question. You're saying calling committees within the context of the year? Right. Hmm. And then my second comment is really on N, number N, um, oversee the implementation of and monitoring compliance with the operating principles and bylaws. Uh, I, I just think that's that encompasses so much that seems to be 
translated differently at different times um, by different members, that that might be worth part of our discussion when we meet in retreat so that when we talk about how we're going to conduct business that we're really all on the same understanding on how that falls in there into play. Thanks. Mr. Phillips? Thank you. We, um, Layla, Layla and I, of course, had a, an email exchange where I, I expressed some questions and she gave some very good answers. In fact, I, 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 I'd like the group to consider adding in some of what Layla gave back to, to my questions. Uh, uh, for example, on the item about, uh, you know, let's see which one is it here? Uh, about the agendas, where'd that go? Oh yes, uh, C, planning meeting agendas with the superintendent. Um, I, I I believe I wholeheartedly agree with what, what Layla gave back to me, which is that uh, this by no means diminishes board members' uh, ability to have items added to the agenda. And uh, if there would be no uh, strong objection. I'd like to add that phrase in there just to, you know, let, let it be clear that uh, uh, board members do continue to have the, the ability to influence the agenda, even if they're not uh, at the moment president. Uh, next, um, there there was the question about uh, the president being the uh, what's the word spokesperson. spokesperson. No, no, no. One of G to act as liaison between the board and the superintendent, and I think Layla correctly pointed out that the, there are situations where the president does act as as um, liaison. But she went on to clarify that the bylaw language does not limit access to the superintendent or stifle communications between the board members and the superintendent, which. I think it's uh, beautifully put, and I, I think something to that effect would be useful to, to, to say there, so that, to, so that we all understand that uh, that Nick wouldn't have to, to talk to just one of us, for example, that he has open access to talk to each of us individually, and by the same token that you know, each of us individually has, you know, the, the ability to, to speak directly to Nick. Although there are, as Layla points out, situations where it does make sense to to have that liaison function. And let's see, finally, oh, about the spokesperson thing. Uh, H, act as spokesperson for the board to the public and the staff and, and the press. And uh, I think Layla came up with an, uh, uh, some language which I, I thought was very helpful. Um, something about uh, unless a designee has been uh, appointed. So that, I think that means that normally the president would be the spokesperson, uh, unless, of course, uh, he or she has designated someone else to perform that function. Very good. We've got those down, and we will adjust that language on Friday. Um, other questions? Yes. Now that I'm teaching grammar and writing, <laughs> not very well, I might add. Yes. On K, it says ensure orientation for new board members. Should that be of new board members? Or if is for the appropriate word, Pam? Yeah, other comments? Okay, next. There will be orientation before. <laughs> uh, 0171.2, Vice President. I wanted to point out to, our, to everybody that um, D was what we had added since that has been our current practice for the past four years and we wanted to be sure that everybody was on board with that addition. 
Great. <laughs> Kudos. Okay, next. And 0171.3, Secretary. Mr. Phillips. Hi. Um, I just have a little trouble with the word periphery. That, that seems to suggest a, more of a clerical function than what I would expect an officer of the board to, to do vis-a-vis -vis minutes. Uh, it, I, I think what's intended is exactly right, which is that the secretary would have responsibility for, you know, seeing that the minutes uh, make sense and that they act accurately reflect what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, proofreading suggests something a little bit more on the mechanical end of, you know, checking for punctuation. You do, you do that. I have done that, right? Dana. <laughs> well, Dana never had that from me when I was secretary. <laughs> she's, she's not getting it probably from me either. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't have a strong objection to proofreading over. Do you have another? <laughs> Word oh, choice you might suggest. Uh, no, how about to re review for completeness and accuracy? And then, if you insist on correcting punctuation, I guess you can. Well, it has to be accurate. Thank you. Any other? Questions? I did have one question. It came up in our conversation, and, and we weren't certain how we would want to proceed, but we had thought that are there other duties that we would like our secretary, not necessarily Kathy, but anybody serving in that role, um, thank you letters from the board, um, celebrate one another's birthday. Just, I don't know, just other things, is there anything else that we would, and not necessarily that we have to have it in writing, mm. but are there other responsibilities that we would like the if secretary to help? Just <laughs> okay. Are you going to put it in a policy? No, no we won't put a policy, but you have to send one to Yeah. Okay, next. I can think of one. Yes. You know, we don't have a, a board library. And we I do have a policy that says we can have one. <laughs> if we should ever happen to have a board library, that, that might be something that the secretary could help to establish and to oversee in a very mathematical I manner, like of course. Hmm. That could to be <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next. Thank you very much. Moving on, bylaw 0175.1, school board conferences, conventions, and workshops. This is a revised bylaw. It was proposed by the policy committee. It has been reviewed and revised by the policy committee. This again is part of our ongoing review and cleanup of our bylaws and policies. And we are adding a minor adjustment and then also referring to a other po another policy that we have in Carmel Clay Schools that helps guide our teachers and administrators when they travel. Discussion? Mr. Phillips? I think I saw something in, in this material, Dr. Dillon, that talked about uh, a board members having to get prior approval for travel expenses, uh, who, who exactly would offer that prior approval for a board member? Um, would that be yourself? It, it would be if the superintendent directs me to do so, Mr. Phillips. Um, I'm afraid, do you remember where you saw that in here so that we could all refer to that? It's not here. Uh, I think perhaps in 6550. I don't know. I can, I can say to you that teachers and administrators in this district must receive prior approval to incur expenses that they expect to be reimbursed for by the district. It is in 6550. It's in the first paragraph. 
in the policy? It's in the first paragraph of the policy. Yes, authorized in advance. There you yeah, go. Yeah, in advance. Yes. But it's incurred yes, by the em employee. We're not employees. So well, this that's is precisely the source of my problem. I, since I'm not an employee, but a member of the governing board, to whom do I turn for approval? If, uh, let's say, I want to attend an ISBA conference, which has a registration fee. Do, do I turn to uh, Dr. Wall and say, Nick, please approve this? You would turn to the board. I'm sorry? You would turn to your fellow board members. So we, we should vote on uh, these expenditures beforehand? I, I think it's a, you know, an uncertainty that needs to be looked at. I think I see his point because it, as it works right now in practice, when we find out there is an ISBA conference that's, that's coming up this month, we pretty much just tell Dana we would like to go. Mm -hmm. And so I figure, I've always just assumed if she doesn't say no, I get to go. But that's our, <laughs> that's our professional. So Dana, Dana clarifies that for us. Thank you. <laughs> that's our professional organization. So okay, I on. see that as a little different in that kind of travel which is related to our profession as school board members in our professional organization. So that would be something that we could do, but I, I would see it would be outside of those, something where you would request. If I could just add in, just years past when I was president, I just remember talking with Dana at some point just to make sure the board was with, well within the budget for that, and um, she would just let us know if we were getting close, and we'd never get close. So, if there was something extraordinary, like Pam said, um, I don't know if it's a specific route, as you said, Greg, as far as how that's brought up, but it um, it red flags pretty easily. Well, I, I understand the concern. Mm -hmm. um, from the board's, per from the committee's perspective, what we wanted to be sure is that all members who are going to be using the corporate expense, the expense of the taxpayers, that they don't abuse that, that privilege. And that, no, we cannot have, I mean, there's other points in this guideline that we cannot purchase alcohol. We're not expecting the, the district to pay for us to go to Ocean Air every night of the week while we're out of town and incurring some expense of two or three hundred dollars per person for food when we could more frugally eat. Um, so that's the direction we were going. I appreciate the, the approval is a, a concern and we will certainly look at how we can restate that in a way that we know we have the privilege to do these activities but have some um, have some guidelines to to help us to ensure that we are not just us but people in the future will certainly be judicious. I, I think we we all feel pretty much the same way. None of us wants to be uh, wasteful or doing anything which is uh, you know going to look embarrassing to the board in the eyes of the public. Uh, as far as an approval, I, I think the the board basically, you know, is its own authority, and and uh, the, each of us as in individuals is subject to the will of the of the group as a whole. So there has to be some mechanism that we can think of that, you know, that would cover this this need, so that we don't have people jetting off to the Caribbean on a supposed school business. Well, there are opportunities in the Caribbean. <laughs> I don't think we should be doing that. But no, I, I wasn't <laughs> suggesting that. Friday. Okay. We will take further action on Friday when we're together and bring a different, some different language before the board. Next. Thank you. Policy 1537, Military Service. This will be a new policy for Carmel Clay Schools. It was recommended by Neola. 
It has been reviewed and revised by the policy committee. Uh, you currently have two policies, a 3,000 and a 4,000, that are identical to this policy. The only difference would be is this references your administration instead of your uh, certified staff or non-certified staff. This is a continuing um, update of the policies being offered by NEOLA to make sure that you have administrative policies that are reflective in the certified staff section. If you'll remember several years ago, NEOLA started the movement to make sure that administrators were covered in a category of their own instead of being covered by the certified staff category. Discussion? Moving right along. Policy 2270, Religion in the Curriculum. This is a revised policy brought to us by NEOLA. It has been reviewed and revised by the policy committee. NEOLA offered this revised policy 2270 for the policy committee's consideration. And it was the opinion of the policy committee that the introductory paragraph in the revised policy very clearly defined for our employees their role in regard to religion in the curriculum. The additional wording provided in this policy is a clarification of the First Amendment protections in relation to religion in the curriculum. Discussion? Next. Policy 2510, Adoption of Curricular Materials. This is a revised policy which includes a title change. It's been proposed by NEOLA. It's been reviewed and revised by the policy committee. This policy replaces the current 2510 adoption of textbooks. Neola recommended a lengthy replacement policy. The policy committee requested that Dr. Dudley review our current policy and the recommendations of Neola. Dr. Dudley provided the policy committee a much shorter and more applicable version of, for their consideration. This policy has been taken to district discussion on August 20th, 2013 and the policy committee added an Indiana code citation for clarification as a result of recommendations made during discussion. Discussion? Great, well, seeing if there's no discussion, I think we are all caught up. And that concludes. Thank you very much, Dr. Dilling. You are welcome, thank you very Looks much. Looks like we've got a few things cut out for us on Friday. Yep. Are you buying lunch? I'm yeah, kidding. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, with that, although um, we certainly don't have it listed here, are there any board members who have any, any items to share this evening? No? Nope. Superintendent, any words to share with us? Good to be here. That sounds great. Okay, with that, meeting is adjourned.